We are in May 1940. The German Reich is occupying a big part of Europe. One of Hitler's new targets was the country that humiliated Germany during the First World War, a defeat still hard to ignore for Germans. France has declared war against Germany on September 3rd, 1939 until the surrender on June 22nd, 1940. Now known as the Battle of France, it lasted from May 10th to the 2nd of June, six weeks of battle. About 96,000 French soldiers died in combat and about 200,000 wounded. By comparison, 27,000 German soldiers were dead and about 111,000 wounded. A new idea came up in a French government, creating an armistice with the Nazis. They thought that if they proposed a peace talk first, they could ask for a bit of treatment with the Germans. On June 16th, the president of the council, Paul Renault, unable to convince his cabinet to accept the proposal for a Franco-British Union, put forward by the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, submitted his recognition to the president of the Republic, Albert Lebrun. Lebrun decided to charge Marshal Pétain to form a new government, a man known as the Hero of Redan who fought for France during the First World War. Pétain was a good candidate to form a government, because even though his ideas were far from politically correct, Pétain was known for being anti-Semitic, stubborn, and he publicly campaigned to sign an armistice with the Nazis. He was still a hero for the people, and someone to trust. Lebrun knew the French would listen and follow Pétain in his ideas. On a radio speech by Pétain himself on June 17, 1940, he announced that he was asking for the condition of an armistice, which many soldiers would interpret as the armistice was signed. C'est le cœur serré que je vous dis aujourd'hui qu'il faut cesser le combat. Je me suis adressé cette nuit à l'adversaire pour lui demander s'il est prêt à rechercher avec moi, entre soldats, après la lutte et dans l'honneur, les moyens de mettre un terme aux hostilités. Que tous les Français se groupent autour du gouvernement que je préside pendant ces heures, pendant ces dures épreuves. The irony of the situation was that the Nazis hosted the meeting of the armistice in the same train that the Germans had signed their surrender in the First World War. The collaboration was officially announced by Pétain in a speech when meeting Hitler in Montoire sur le Loire on October 24, 1940. On July 10th, the Third Republic was dissolved as Pétain was granted dictatorial powers by the National Assembly to create that so-called Vichy regime, situated in Vichy, the strongest city of the Free French Zone. But what is the Free French Zone? After the armistice was signed, France has been split up in two different zones, the Occupied Zone, that covered more than half of France, including cities such as Paris, Bordeaux and Brest. This part of France was fully under control of Germans. The French government has little to no power over this zone, which was a smart move for the Nazis, since the occupied zone had m almost all the powerful cities on its side, and maritime power in Brest to fight the English ships. The other zone was called the Free Zone, which was under control of the French government that was located in Vichy. The reason why Germans gave that zone to the French government was mostly because it was no use to them. The Germans were already in a union with the Italian, so having frontiers clothed with them didn't matter to them. And the Mediterranean maritime borders weren't useful either. Pétain obtained unexpected conditions from the Germans. Military neutrality of France, the preservation of military equipment not captured during combats, the ban on access to the colonial empire for the Axis forces, Germany, Italy and Japan, the definition of a free zone and the guarantees of direct French administrations, as opposed to the other defeated countries, the definition of principles imposed on limited corporations as regards judicial and economic aspects, including the payments of occupations fees. The treatment of Jewish people. Only Jewish people foreign refugees in France were subject to Nazi jurisdictions. Jewish French citizens were subject to French jurisdictions. 
The French troops were disarmed, unlike the German troops, in 1918. French prisoners of war rallied during military operations remained in captivity. They will not be released before 1945. Until the liberation, France had to pay Germany an allowance of 400 million francs a day. The new government intended to assert the authority of the executive in order to negotiate the condition of peace with the Reich, as well as to restore stability in a country stunned by the military debacle and whose population remains prey to exodus. On July 10th, 1940, Parliament finally approved by 569 votes against 80 a text presented by Laval, entrusting full constitutional powers to Marshal Pétain. The next day, by virtue of this text, Pétain granted himself broad executive and legislative powers, including that of appointing his own successor. The Republic was over. Celui qui a pris en main les destinées de la France a le devoir de créer l'atmosphère la plus favorable à la sauvegarde des intérêts du pays. C'est dans l'honneur et pour maintenir l'unité française, une unité de dix siècles, dans le cadre d'une activité constructive du nouvel ordre européen, que j'entre aujourd'hui dans la voie de la collaboration. To maintain a powerful and popular regime, the cult of personality was installed with Pétain as his main image. Posters of him with the new Vichy motto started appearing in the streets, journals and medias. Even songs like Maréchal nous voilà were all around the free zone and portraits of Pétain were in every classroom in every school. This is the motto of the Vichy regime. But what exactly does it mean? We'll start with famille, which means family. The family during the new regime was something very important since it was necessary to recreate a stronger France with a new generation. Father had to work very early until very late in the day, so they generally never interact with their family, except at dinners. Mothers had to stay home to take care of children. The government also advised at least three children per family to strengthen the people by having more children. Mothers were also banned from so-called men's work, which boiled down to political and social work. Abortion was also totally banned and considered a crime because children were seen as the gift and hope of the new friends. Did you know Mother's Day was originally a movement established by the Vichy regime to promote the perfect mom, an image of a mother created by the Vichy regime, a mother who was there for her kids, who supported the regime and who was a fervent French patriot. For work, Pétain wanted a total control over all the workers. Order and coordination were needed in these numerous works to gain a more united France. And the last one, patrie, which means the people, the French, because Pétain wanted to show the people that even though the German had taken France, the French power is still present and strong. Of course, this is simply a tactic to make the people trust Pétain. In reality, He knew the Germans had much more power than he would assume on the French. Not only was the cult of personality established, the fear and intimidation were also something used commonly to convince the people to follow the regime. Threats and physical punishments were also used if someone showed sign of rebellion against the regime. The French at that time were mainly anti-Semitic. The French shoes were seen as a danger, a nuisance in society because they held power in France, much more than the French wanted them to have. They were also seen as being a part of society, as if they didn't try to be included in the French non-Jewish culture. After a one sea conference held on January 20th, 1942, regarding the final solution of the Jewish question, all the occupied country, including France, had to list their Jews. The French went against these ideas. Sure, some of them were, But let's remember that when the USS asked for the deportation of the French Jews, the French government gave more expected Jews than they were supposed to, as if they were trying to get rid of them. This shows an anti-Semitic difference. Very favorable to the Germans, Pierre Laval, one of the most important French politicians of the Vichy regime, 
led the French government from April 1942 until August 1944. He multiplied initiatives to please the Führer. The Legionary Order Service was a collaborationist militia created by Joseph Dino, a far-right veteran from the First World War, too radical even for other supporters of the Vichy regime. It was granted its independence in January 1943, after Operation Torch and the German occupation of, of the South Zone, until then dubbed Free Zone and controlled by Vichy. Pierre Laval himself, supported by Marshal Pétain, passed the law which accorded the soul its independence and transformed it into the Milice, which participated in battles alongside the Nazis against the resistance and committed numerous war crimes against civilians. The French militia was created by the Vichy regime on January 20, 1943, made up around 30,000 members including 15,000 active members. This paramilitary organization's main mission was to fight against the terrorist movements of the resistance. In reality, the militia quickly constituted the political police of Vichy and came to play a supplementary role with the Gestapo and the other Nazi forces present on the territory. Openly fascist, anti-communist, anti-Semitic and anti-republican, the militia was officially placed under the command of Prime Minister Pierre Laval. Eager to place their German occupier and in a certain anti-Semitic tradition, Vichy promulgated in October 1940 a statute restricting the rights of Jews. These are notably expelled from the public service and prohibited from exercising certain professions. Later, they are listed and France participates in the deportation. The Veldiv Roundup an abbreviation of Rafle du Vélodrome d'Hiver, was a mass arrest of foreign Jewish families by French police at the behest of the German authorities that took place in Paris on 16 and 17 July 1942. According to records of the prefecture, the police, 13,152 Jews were arrested, including more than 400 children. They were held at the Veldrum de Fer, in extremely crowded conditions, almost without food and water and with no sanitary facilities. In the week following the arrest, the Jews were taken to the Drancy, Petivers and bonne la rolande internment camps, before being shipped in rail cattle cars to Auschwitz for the mass murder. The roundup was one of several aimed at eradicating the Jewish population in France. Many French Jews thought that it would be safe in the free zone of France, but the arrestations took place both in the occupied and the French zone. The Vichy regime ended on August 20th, 1944, when the Germans left France with the arrival of the Allies and General de Gaulle to cover the presidency of the provisional government of the French Republic. Most of the French people initially supported the regime, but opinion gradually turned against the French government and the occupying German forces when it became clear that Germany was losing the war, and living conditions in France were becoming increasingly difficult. The French resistance, working largely in concert with Charles de Gaulle movement outside the country, increased in strength over the course of the occupation. After the Allied invasion of Normandy in June 1944, and the liberation of France later that year, the Free French Provisional Government of the French Republic, GPRF, was installed as a new national government led by de Gaulle. The last of the Vichy exiles were captured in the Sig Marigan enclave in April 1945. Pétain was put on trial for treason by the new provisional government and sentenced to death but that was commuted to life in prison by de Gaulle. Only four senior Vichy officials were sentenced to death for crimes against humanity, although many others had participated in the deportation of Jews for internment in Nazi concentration camps, abuse of prisoners, and severe acts against members of the resistance. Many French people started a chase against the collaborateurs of the war. They were already hidden in France and were trying to flee to other countries. The French were angry. We could see people killing collabos in the streets, shooting them without mercy. 
most of the Kalapus would never see the sight of a court, because the friend thought that it didn't need a court to be found guilty. Women who had relationship with Germans were also treated horribly. They were beaten, forced to walk in the streets, sometimes half naked with a zwazika, to fill them with shame. Around 20,000 women were beaten, and 10,000 ex collabo were killed in the streets. But the one everyone wanted dead was Laval. After the liberation of France in 1944, Laval was imprisoned by the Germans. In April 1945, he fled to Spain, but soon returned to France, where he was arrested by the French government under Charles de Gaulle. After what has been described as a flawed trial, Laval was found guilty of plotting against the security of the state and of collaboration with the enemy. After a failed suicide attempt, Laval was executed by firing squad in October 1945. This put an end to four years of suffering for the French, especially the French Jews, four years of suffering for hopefully many years of peace. In 1995, French President Jacques Chirac apologized for the complicit role that French police and civil servants played in the raid. In 2017, President Emmanuel Macron more specifically admitted the responsibility of the French state in the roundup, and hence, in the Holocaust, putting an end to the people minimizing the regime's guilt. Hi, I don't have any text right now, so I'm sorry if it's a bit messy. I just wanted to thank you guys for watching this video. I really loved making it, because it's a subject that I really like and that is important to me, even though it's hard to talk about it. It was hard in a way that made me super emotional. Um, you don't really understand the misery and the suffering of the people before having to, um, you know, search pictures and real footage of what happened. And it was hard. I felt like my duty today was honoring the victims of the regime and their families. This part of history is not always talked about and I think we need to talk about it, to remember it, and to never forget. We need to learn from the mistakes of the past, and never forget the victims. Thank you for listening.